Hi everybody, this is Gil. So we're bringing back the videos. See how it goes. We're going to review Rings of Power. Maybe after that some more. I'm going to do it with Utcher. We also have a podcast. It's called As Depicted on Film. As Depicted on Film. The link is in the description. I hope you enjoy the video. Sauron sees himself as master of all Middle Earth. He seeks to rule it not only through conquest, but by bending the minds of all its peoples to his own. So Rings of Power Season 2, Wolfgang. Yeah. Insane. It is insane. It's pretty good. Uh, wow. it's, it's also pretty weird. Just, okay, now we live in a time where Amazon, former bookshop, <laughs> conquered the world and now um, redoes Tolkien. Like they wow. redo everything. <laughs> but uh, it's but, pretty okay. I'm pretty into it. I'm super into it. I think yeah. it's really good. I love season one. Yeah. And I'm thinking, okay, so I'm watching, we, we watched three episodes. I was thinking first, okay, this show is about two things. It's about the rise of fascism. Mm, yeah. A little bit, right? There's like Harry Potter-esque there with the rise of Voldemort. Nobody, uh, should we do anything? Should we not? And he's manipul manipulating everybody. And it's also about the climate crisis because there's like an earthquake going on in Mordor that then, you know, uh, plays out in the dwarfy mountains. Yeah. And they, but they all react to the challenge locally, individually, mm -hmm. and then they are susceptible for global changes and for manipulation. Right. Yeah. The manipulation is a really important uh, wow. subplot. And it's, uh, it, it really reminds me of the time we live in now uh also like um when the when the elves they start wearing the rings and they each they are each in their own information bubble right so um, right. they have their, they have their own twitter feed where right. they're being told about stuff and then at some point they compare notes like oh are you actually seeing things the same way and that's kind of similar to the time where we're in now like everybody's wow. being narrow casted to in their own way and has their own weird perception of what's going on in right. the world and and totally people can totally diverge now right right uh, so it's exactly to, exactly to that point i was thinking like so the show shows us how vulnerable we are to misinformation Right, mm -hmm. Sauron is on a misinformation and disinformation campaign. Yeah, and it's like you're watching a train wreck, and it's like inevitable because, of course, they will uh, be susceptible to that, as if because that's how they're built. And I was thinking, one thing that is missing that the show doesn't provide a solution. What they should, what should they have done? But then I thought this wouldn't happen to the hobbits. Mm -hmm. This wouldn't happen to the hobbits because they are as a group. Yeah. They have the same perspective and perception of reality as a group. And that's why they're not susceptible to this. Mm -hmm. Whereas, uh, you know, hum humanoids, bigger humanoids are more susceptible because of how, whatever, their cultural evolution. The, the hobbits are more based. They uh, touch grass more often, so they're less susceptible. Yes, right. Okay, so what do you think, like the, like the themes, what, uh, what themes like uh, hit you? Uh, there's also the theme which is kind of depicted uh, behind you, this uh, notion of who's got the mandate of heaven. And, ah, and nice. This particular scene, wow. it also reminded me of the assassination attempt on Trump uh, ah. in the sense that all of a sudden this shitbag is like the brave one wow, and the whole nice. audience goes, fight, fight, fight. Wow, wow, right? wow, wow. And we we talked earlier this a little bit like Daenerys, right? Mm -hmm. And also, I mentioned I just like learned uh, two weeks ago where the whole thing in Tolkien's stories, where the eagles come in and save the day, where it comes from. It comes from the Bible, uh, where God claims that He took the Hebrews out of Egypt on eagles' wings, and it's based on an ancient expression, not just Hebrew, ancient expression in general, because uh, eagles take their young on their wings. Humans see it as if, you know, they're taking them from point A to point B, like very comfortably, and they take care of everything. And it's this positive imagery. And here they turned it into the harbinger of uh, doom. Mm -hmm. That was like, this is like a scene that we've seen 
in several other ways, Game of Thrones and just like in general in popular culture. And it's always like, we're like very emotional and we're rooting for the person who gets crowned in this spectacular way. But now we're rooting against it. So it's, wow, this, I think this show is very deep. I think mm -hmm. it's very deep. I guess we expect that this is a false sign, right? At some point. I remembered they were talking about it in the previous season. They did it. They had it in the previously where somebody talked about that, about an eagle coming in at the time of a coronation. And that made somebody in the past very special. So he's like alluding, oh, maybe that would happen to me. Mm -hmm. it, so they like brought it back in the, they planned it. it he, the eagle didn't just, uh, you know, come. They, you know, it's a manipulation. They hired an eagle. <laughs> hired an eagle? <laughs> and when everybody's so... afraid of the eagle, he knows the eagle is coming, so he's not afraid of the eagle. Right. That, that's how they defeat uh, blind Kamala Harris. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right, right. And, you know, okay, so that scene should, w was about... Also, like the dangers in absolute free speech for anyone mm. and everyone in the town square. Like they saw earlier that she was pro free speech. Somebody slapped her and she was like, no, no, it's okay. They're like, oh, okay, so I can also slap her. Mm -hmm. So they manu they used this uh, free speech to manipulate the situation in order to get her killed now and just like, do a coup. Mm. So sometimes free speech can lead to coups. We saw that also, you know, a hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. There's a real uh, diversity in who, who's good with the audience because, like, the, the first Sauron attempt, which was supposed to be like the, the beer hall putsch, that failed. <laughs> wow, wow, <laughs> that was pathetic. The yeah. audience did not did not appreciate <laughs> the first speech. Very bad reviews. <laughs> and they, yeah, so that's why they killed him. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. and then he, he oozed down. I mean, it's a kind of a cool sequence. He oozes down, cool and uh, yeah, and then he comes back. So like it's like like he's not special, right? That's like he's not special. He's not super magical. He's just manipulative, and he uses people's uh, goodwill in order to further himself. It's interesting. Like, we're watching all these conversations, and we know like why like like what he's thinking when he's talking to this uh, elvish uh, ringmaker and he's just sharing what's important to him what's not important to him how is his life and he's like okay <laughs> just take my notes here and use it against you later it's like he found a hack like like we are easily manipulated as as a species yeah you know not everybody is privy to the same information and so then they're more easily manipulated. And in this case, right. you know, some key messages were intercepted. We don't quite know yet by whom, I guess. But, right. Uh, right, we don't know when. Yeah, we, we just see them dragging the bodies out of the frame, but we right. don't even see who And we does see it. that the bad guys, like supposedly the humans that are aligned with uh, this Atar fellow, they're not bad guys. They're just like being manipulated as well. You know, things are happening with the dwarves. I guess they have an uh, environmental disaster uh, hitting them uh, suddenly, um, and they fail to address it. Uh, well, first of all, they, they kind of lost the initial connection to the mountain, so that sort of exacerbates the disaster. But the, the biggest problem is that they're so divided, hindered right. by, you know, pride. I'm, I'm not going to... And, and then the weird thing is also that you know, it there's the manipulation again, right? Like, oh, if I convince my dad that we right. should make these rings, he'll be proud of me. And so they're all being used by their own weak spots. In this case, it's like right. the, the, the dad's son kind of dynamic, right? It's also a little bit about dual use technology, right? So it, it well, is, definitely like, it feels like nuclear power. Yeah, and, I mean, it could also be like maybe AI or like drones or whatever, right? There's these sort of right. these technologies that are very powerful and that some people have access to and others don't, and they have dual applications. Uh, and that saves the elves for a bit. So they think, okay, right. we're back. Um, right. We've got the dwarves who are working on coming back, at least the illusion, they'll get their rings. Humans are basically in the pipeline, right? So I guess we see that Isildur is in the race. Um, and I guess humans will get rings. 
uh, his uh, personal story was also touching, right, with his mom. Yeah. And then there's, uh, you know, who we think might be Gandalf, I guess, <laughs> uh, traveling through the wilderness. And that sort of sets the stage for the coming season. Right. And we don't know, like, what exactly happened now with, uh, with them. Right. So, like, all these, uh, so we'll, we'll keep hitting all these uh, points in mm -hmm. uh, coming uh, episodes because they will, they will definitely come back. So that's it for this video. Uh, we were maybe a little bit rusty. The next video will be more tight. And starting from the next episode, next week, we'll also post a longer conversation on the podcast as depicted on film. And there we'll talk about specific elements in the episodes that, that we can directly apply to things that are going on today in today's politics and also in the politics of the country where I'm from and I'm not currently in anymore, and that's Israel. The way Sauron manipulates everybody to act against their own best interest, that really triggered me. <laughs> okay, so make sure to subscribe, like, and we'll see you all next week. Bye everybody, thank you for watching.